Hi, I'm Patricia Grabarek. And I'm Katina Sawyer, and welcome to the Worker Being Podcast. So Katina, what's the article you're going to talk to us about today? About Yes, so today I'm going to be talking about workaholism. And mm. uh, I know a lot of people, uh, since we've, a lot of us have been working from home, have had issues or challenges with sort of separating their work and their life and people are maybe working longer hours than they were before so thought it was a good time to check in to see uh what we can learn about being a workaholic what the outcomes are associated with that but also we'll have like a little quiz to see if you qualify as a workaholic and I'm very scared (laughs) to see the results (laughs) I will tell you right now you won't I don't think knowing what I know about you and also what I know about myself uh, we will not probably fare very well in in uh, in one area. I think we might fare better. So it's mostly bad that we might be workaholics, but not fully bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we both have full time jobs and we're doing worker being. So we do a lot. We have a lot on our plate. We love it all. So hopefully that helps. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see and maybe a little cringeworthy. So listeners get a ready to hear us and how we may not always live up to what we preach with the research. (laughs) Yes, very, very true. Um, That is very true. So uh, we we will uh, definitely be honest with all of you and hopefully you'll be honest with yourselves when you learn more about um, uh, whether or not you qualify or fall into this category. So um, we will see. Um, but before we do that, just quickly, uh, how are you doing? How are things going with you today? What's going on? Things are good. Um, nothing super exciting. I mean, we're still in COVID madness and it's getting worse. So we're recording this a week and a half or so before Thanksgiving and the numbers are not good and California just went into, well, at least Southern California, every county went back to like the most strict um, restrictions. I mean, LA County has always been like that. So not, not much is changing for me, but yeah. you know, the surrounding counties are doing that, which is like where my parents are, my sister is. Um, and it's just like something about knowing that everyone's kind of going back to that is a little bit anxiety inducing. Yeah. And also just knowing like the reason that it's happening is because things aren't getting better. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's like also problematic, True. like knowing that like, oh, it's not just like a oh, we're doing this thing. It's like, oh, there's a reason that we're doing it and it's not fun. Yeah. And I don't, we're not, I don't know what's going on in what's going to happen in DC or near us, but, and we haven't been, um, uh, like alerted that anything like that's going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised if it does very soon. So I'm also planning for that. I feel like it's so weird when we record early because not that it's weird that we record early because everyone does that, but like, it's weird because people will be listening to it later. And sometimes I feel like all everybody listening is like, they they don't even know like I feel like a narrator's like listening like and yet they had no idea that <laughs> things were about to get like, you know what I mean like I just feel like it's like potentially like everyone's listening like oh these poor girls they have no idea <laughs> so um anyway whenever we talk about stuff like this that's gloomy I always think like everybody already knows like what's gonna happen everybody already knows what's happening it freaks me out so true it's like what we did over the summer too when Allie was on leave and we recorded so early we're like maybe COVID's over by now and then people listening to it months later are like shut up shut up Uh, (laughs) it's not over no (laughs) it's not and like you're uh, yeah like those will not age well I suppose (laughs) I didn't really think about that we're like two weeks it's been so long and now we're like it has been 30 years (laughs) I have a beard like I don't know (laughs) anyway Um, but (laughs) regardless um but I think one of the things that's been harder and definitely for us and I've heard from other people too is kind of managing your work and life and so this week certainly has been um there's a lot going on both uh you know from from a bunch of different angles at work and so it's been a little bit more of a stressful work period for me um in the last uh week or so and so um I think it's always a good thing to keep in mind as we go back into a uh, time period where we're more in lockdown to be like more, not that again, that we're doing anything super different than what we were doing, but even just mentally, like if you have more of a lockdown mentality, potentially like you might neglect your well being more or not think as much about how your work and your life are overlapping or overflowing. So um, I think it's good to keep in mind, like go into it now that you know what it's like to go into it, to go into it with like a more conscious mindset of like, what do I wish I did differently? Or what did I learn from last time and try to like keep yourself as well as possible? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I 
I agree. I think everyone needs to take that second to, to reflect and help themselves get through the next round of all of this. Um, and who knows how much longer we have to do all of this. So we should just be taking care of ourselves and taking it one day at a totally. time. Totally, completely agree. So tell us, um, now that you have a really tough work week, I have a really busy work week too. So let's, let's reflect on our workaholism. Yes. Okay. So this article is called the multidimensional workaholism scale, linking conceptualization and measurement of workaholism. And it is by Melissa Clark, Rachel Williamson Smith, and Nicholas Haynes. And this article is basically helpful because it helps us to understand what is workaholism. So I'm sure all of you have heard about being a workaholic. The research on this topic is kind of more scattered. It hasn't really clearly defined what workaholism is. And as a result, we don't really have a way of measuring or we haven't had a good way of measuring whether someone's a workaholic. And so this article sort of tries to better define workaholism and then through the definition they also create this scale of workaholism that seems to better reflect kind of what the um, actual like behaviors and feelings of being a workaholic might look like. Okay that's interesting so I am excited to kind of hear what the definition is officially and yes. what what they measure. Yes so workaholism is you, it's a term used to describe employees who feel an uncontrollable need or a compulsion to work. So it doesn't sound very pleasant, right? Um, but this is basically feeling a need or a compulsion that you have to be working all the time. And um, there are different dimensions or different uh, pieces of workaholism that go into the definition. Um, so what they did was they took a look at, okay, we know that this is how the literature has defined workaholism per before. And now we want to kind of review all of the different pieces of research that have talked about workaholism and come up with these like kind of main characteristics or components of what it is to be a workaholic. Mm -hmm. So they came up with these uh, four things that kind of emerged from going through the literature that seem pretty central to being a workaholic. So while it's not the definition, they're sort of core to like understanding what workaholism is. So the very first one is that you have an internal versus an external motivation. So you're not working because your boss is like telling you to work or you're not working because of financial reasons. You're actually driven to work because you feel an inner pressure that you constantly should be working or have to be working. And this is thought to be more of a negative pressure than a positive pressure. So it's not like, oh, I'm so excited about this. I have to, like, I really want to go do this necessarily. It's more so the idea that you feel like if you're not working, you, um, if you're not working, you feel like something is like you're being lazy or like you can't stop working. You feel like this nagging sense that if you're not working, there's something wrong. Interesting. Okay. So that sounds, uh, well, I'm curious about the rest of the, the different areas, but that sounds less like us, I would say. Yeah. I think that that is not quite exactly like us. So the first one is this, is this internal motivation. The second is that it's more of a negative than a positive pressure. Um, the third is that it's a preoccupation with work. So you can't turn off your work related thoughts. So as a result of having this like internal feeling like you should constantly be working, even when you're doing other things, you keep thinking about work. And then the last thing is that because you keep thinking about it, then you spend too much time and too much energy or excessive time and energy working. So I feel this internal compulsion that I should always be working. It feels like this negative thing that I want to relieve. So I keep thinking about working even if I don't have to be. And as a result, I often act on those thoughts by spending a lot of time and energy working. Okay. So there's, that makes a lot of sense. So it's like, I, it's not, like you said, it's not your boss or your company forcing you to always work a million hours. That's a wholly different right. situation. It's you are doing it right. to yourself. You just can't stop working. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And so they basically break that down into, uh, they basically like name these four components. So the first one is motivational. Uh, the idea that you have this inner pressure or compulsion. So you're internally motivated. So there's a motivational component. It's like I have this internal need, right? So 
the reason it's so like all consuming almost is because it taps into your motivations in terms of your inner compulsion to work. It also taps into your cognitions that you can't stop thinking about work. Um, it also taps into your emotions because you're feeling these negative emotions when you're not working. So that idea of like, this is a negative pressure and I want to alleviate it makes us feel bad. And then it also involves behaviors that you're actually acting on it. So the reason why workaholism can feel very encompassing when you look at those four components is because it's both mental, emotional, motivational and behavioral in nature so it can become really overwhelming to people when they experience workaholism it basically takes over all of you because even the behavioral piece you could say is physical right you're physically doing something exactly exactly yep um and so the literature kind of talks about um workaholism right now in a more messy way and they're trying to clean that up like I was saying but um one of the things that people say is like, okay, well, what's the difference between workaholism and work engagement, right? Because we've talked about engagement before as a positive thing. And as we'll see later as a spoiler alert, workaholism is actually related to work engagement. So the more you're a workaholic, the more engaged you say you are with your work. <laughs> um, they talk a little bit about that. But um, they do differ regarding their motivation for working. Okay. So work engagement has been linked to um, intrinsic motivation, but because you find the work enjoyable and interesting and not because you're intrinsically motivated to like just work for the sake of working. Right. Okay. Um, so engagement and workaholism can both make you work, can both make you act the same way, but it's a more, it's based on a more positive, pleasurable feeling in the um, engagement sense. And for workaholism, it's more on like alleviating a negative pressure that you feel. Can, well, I don't know if this is getting too deep and if they've even looked at this, but can you do both? Yeah. Yeah. And so they are, they are correlated. They're not the same, but they are correlated. So sometimes you might have a job where you feel really engaged and excited about the work you're doing, but you also have this more like of a personality characteristic or inclination toward also liking to work a lot because you're alleviating this negative pressure like it wouldn't matter what you were doing you would probably work a lot but you also on top of it actually enjoy what you're doing that's like the could be the combination and the overlap is that you're you're um you're working long hours hard hours like that's the overlap between being engaged and workaholism mm -hmm. okay interesting so yeah what else did they find or what else did the study do yeah. So there's this other thing out there that you might hear <laughs> about. So the only reason I want to clarify it is because they make the point to distinguish this from engagement and this other thing called work addiction. Work addiction and workaholism are similar, but they're not the same. And the idea of work addiction is more like what you would go through with a clinical addiction. So it has to do with like, um, uh, like, withdraw from work and like trying to keep yourself from working but like relapsing around work so like there it's it's a it's a more severe more compulsory even though this is still a compulsion to work it's like um it's more in the clinical realm and less in like what we would consider in like the normal psychology realm of uh, a lot of people are workaholics but work addiction is different in the sense that it in it basically makes other things in your life deteriorate to a much greater extent so it's kind of like you know you know that it's not healthy for you to drink on the weekends but maybe you drink on the weekends but like you're not drinking every day it's a little bit of a difference when you have to deal with somebody who's doing something in a way that's actually detracting from their ability to like live their life in any other venue whereas workaholics can manage other things and be like a person that's fully immersed in other parts of their life too, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. So work addiction sounds like something that you probably need to get some help with external to yourself. Exactly. Um, exactly. I mean, you know, obviously you can always do therapy, even if you're not at that extreme to maybe help you with workaholism, but it's not the same. It's yeah. Exactly. So it's like a little bit more manageable. You still function in your personal life, but it's right. not always great either. Right. People are people might be worried about you that you're working too hard or too long, but it's not um, there are things that you could do within your purview to curb those things. If you wanted to, it's not something that's more out of your control and would take like more serious time and energy to try to get rid of. So 
it's not like engagement because it's less positive and it's not like addiction because it's less negative <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, so that's, that's basically how they're framing up workaholism. It's a normal reaction or a normal way of, of working, but it does have these bad, um, kind of consequences associated with it. Um, and what their basic charge in this article is to sort of tack down what is it. And then I can tell you a little bit more about what it does for you, if that makes sense. Yeah, let's do it. So are we going to be quizzing ourselves? Yes. So they went through a ton, a ton, a ton of information and data and polling people to come up with the items and to pare down the items and all that kind of stuff. And so from that perspective, I'm not going to get into the details. Basically, just trust me that it was very rigorous to come up with these items and test the items and make sure that they're tapping the things that they say they're tapping into. So that's all in the article if anyone's interested in finding it. But the real like gem of the article is understanding what what tells you if you're a workaholic, right? Um, so they did find that these four components exist, this motivational component, cognitive component, emotional component and behavioral component. So I'll just go through each of them and you can sort of think to yourself how high or low you think you would be on each of those if that makes if that Yeah, works. let's do it. Okay, so the motivational component, each component is four items. So we'll start with the motivational component. So the four items for motivational component are I always have an inner pressure inside of me that drives me to work. I work because there's a part inside of me that feels compelled to work. I have a strong inner desire to work all of the time and there is a pressure inside of me that drives me to work. Okay. So that's basically all encompassing like I'm just motivated to work more than maybe I should. So how do you feel about this sub component? I think that I have it (laughs) um, because I have trouble sitting still. Like I while I here's what I'll say if I have set aside time for relaxation I can relax but if I feel like I have set aside time or I don't have time set aside where I have like set in my mind I'm going to not I'm going to relax I have trouble not turning downtime into work time if that makes sense Mm -hmm. so I think that if there's time that could be dedicated towards whatever I'll always usually dedicate it towards doing more work than I will towards doing something else which sort of tells me that I feel like I feel some sort of motivation to work when I don't have to be potentially. Yeah, I think I'm with you. I yeah. don't think I'm super extreme on it. Like there are definitely times where I'm just like, I don't I don't want to work anymore and I'm going to sit here and like watch Netflix or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. I do feel like there's a lot of my day where I'm just like, well, I, I could be working and I kind of need to keep working. <laughs> I don't, so I yeah. feel like I have the same thing as you. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it's like if if I haven't told myself that this is time that I'm not working, I'll make it time that I am working, which sort of makes me think that maybe and I think that's probably same for yeah. you. Um, so then this the cognitive component is are all things about thinking about working. So I feel like I can't stop myself from thinking about working. In general, I spend my free time thinking about work. At any given time, the majority of my thoughts are work-related, and it's difficult for me to stop thinking about work when I stop working. I think that's probably my highest one. I, well, I haven't heard the other questions, but I think this one is... Yeah, that's true. (laughs) This one is probably higher, too. I feel like I am thinking about work a lot. I think that when I go to bed even, which I know we've talked about is bad and we have um, told yeah. all of you not to do it, but I know that unless I do something very intentional like a headspace meditation or like something like that from like a sleep perspective, I will go to bed thinking about, all right, what do I need to do tomorrow? What are the things I have to do? Like just thinking about all of that. Yeah. And so I do feel like that's pretty high for me as well. Yeah, I feel like I'm thinking about like uh, Brendan and I go for a walk sometimes around the neighborhood and most of our walk is usually me talking about work related stuff to him like <laughs> I, and he's just like, uh huh. OK, whatever. And, you know, generally our dynamic is that I'm much more talkative than he is. So like it's but the content of my conversation is usually like about a paper I'm working on or something we're working on or like whatever, you know, like he hears a lot about my work. Yeah, I feel like that's true for me, too. I think I spent a lot of time talking about it and thinking about it and both. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, okay. So that's good to know. We're both high on that. Yes. 
And then the emotional component is the one that I think I'm lowest mm-hmm. on. Um, so these are, and this is probably just because I feel like I'm low on emotionality in general, but I feel upset if I have to miss a day of work for any reason. I'm almost always frustrated when I'm not able to work. I feel upset if I cannot continue to work. And when something prevents me from working, I usually get agitated. So Mm -hmm. I think the last one, like if I have to get something done and something's in my way, I do get frustrated with that. Like if Wi-Fi is not working or you know what I mean? Like something like that, I do find that frustrating. But in terms of like being upset if I have to miss a day of work or being fr- like I don't know that I'm like I get like as emotional about it maybe I get stressed about it I don't know if that's the same thing yeah but I don't that's know interesting for me I think I don't like if I have to take off a day of work for I think this doesn't count for vacations right because I think both you and I are like fine with taking vacation yeah yeah um yeah but when it comes to like a random day off like for example tomorrow Nittany has um to go to the oncologist in the afternoon which means it's gonna take a big chunk of my day away from work right I'm not like upset about that or like frustrated with that yeah I think this doesn't right. feel as close to me um but I do agree yeah. that if something is like getting in my way over and over and over again that's when I get really frustrated and annoyed um or yeah. like uh, well this makes me like the worst ever to live with probably but Danny like if he has to come in and tell me something in the middle of something if and I'm in the middle of a, working on something like I basically don't even hear him I'm just like totally yeah. tune him out um in such a way that it's just and so if I have to actually stop then sometimes I might get a little annoyed um yeah me too me too but I don't feel like this is like one where like I wouldn't be like I don't feel that the emotional component is as much for me as like the cognitive component or like feeling something. So that one I think I would be lower on too. Um, And then the last one is behavioral. So when most of my coworkers take breaks, I keep working. I work more than what is expected of me. I tend to work longer hours than most of my coworkers. And I tend to work beyond my job's requirements. (laughs) So yeah. And I also think that for us, if we think about like... (laughs) not just like our jobs requirements, but like that we do other jobs on top of our job. Like I also think like, like that definitely the behavioral component, I think where we need, we need help. We need help. I feel like so far I haven't even said anything. I've just been laughing because it's like, yep. Like the emotional one, I totally agree is probably the lowest. And then it's like the, the thinking about it. And then this, like just working a lot. That's a hundred percent true. Like definitely working more hours. Than people de- like there are people at work that t- block their calendar for lunch. I always say I'm going to do that. And I never, ever, ever, ever do. I never do. Yeah. And I really should. I need to yeah. do it, but I never do. And then I just work through it. I'm also in a weird time zone compared to everybody else. Um, so I think yeah, that makes that's it weirder. True. It's like my lunch is like a, a time that everybody's kind of working, wrapping up their day, things like that. So makes it a little bit harder but um yeah I feel like I just add to my plate all the time anytime there's like a cool new yeah I mean obviously with worker being right like everything that we're doing all the things that we want to do and we're getting excited about we love it so that's one piece that's why we're pushing through it but we we right. add a lot to our plate with worker being but then also even yeah. in my full-time job it's like oh there's this new project like who wants in I feel like I'm always raising my hand maybe too much <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that I think that's part of it, too, is like protecting your time and not spending if you're going to do a lot of things, spending your time on things that are actually like beneficial for you and that you like doing and not things that like are just time fillers because you feel bad, which we've talked about before on the podcast. So I think that's one way to help potentially overcome some of this is being really thoughtful about what you take on and whether you actually want to be doing it which is something I'm not good Mm -hmm. at I like just said no to something today that would have taken up a lot of my time and I felt really good about it um so that I've been trying to get better at too um so yeah so so workaholism those are the four components and there are some things that it's related to so um it is related to um perfectionism Uh, wanting to be more perfect at things that you're doing. Um, It's related to, uh, so from a personality perspective, it's related related to perfectionism. It's also related to negative affect, which they measured as a personality trait, but I would imagine it could also be related to in the moment feeling more negatively or more negative emotions, especially the emotional component is basically made for that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
You have higher work family conflict, higher work interference with family, higher family interference with work perceptions, um, higher emotional exhaustion, uh, lower physical health. Um, but it is positively related to engagement, which is interesting, mm -hmm. right? Um, so engagement's a good thing. Um, but this was positively related to engagement. So it could be related to you really liking your job and wanting to, um, and wanting to work hard and being absorbed in what you're doing might be a good thing. Right. Um, but when you're trying to alleviate, I think what the take home message is, is that you have to understand why you're working so many hours on the job. And if you're working a lot of hours because you really like what you're doing, which for us, we're, we're thinking about it. Are we working longer hours? Are we, um, our, you know, what's the behavioral outcome? Our behavioral outcome might not actually be that bad because we actually like a lot of what we're doing. Um, so some of the behaviors may be due to this like engagement component, right? Um, that might be like the shared overlap. But if you're working because you just feel the pressure internally to work and you need to alleviate that negative pressure, as opposed to feeling like excited about what you're doing, that's when these negative outcomes will come. So you'll have more emotional exhaustion. You'll have less, you'll have, uh, you know, more conflict with your family, more perceived interference of your work and family and one another, uh, more negative affect, things of that nature. So, um, so basically the outcomes are bad, um, associated with wanting to alleviate the pressure to working just for the sake of working, because you feel like you're lazy if you don't, or you feel like you're not being productive if you don't is what's problematic. It's not necessarily whether or not you're working long hours, but why you're working those long hours. Mm -hmm. And if it's just because you're going to be upset, you feel a pressure, you can't stop thinking about work. If that's why you're doing it, then the negative outcomes will come. Whereas if you're doing it because you're really excited about something, then it's probably less likely that those outcomes will come. So I think the big take home is if you're doing the behaviors of a workaholic, like you're working longer than everyone else and you're not taking breaks and things like that, um, that may have bad outcomes for you. But really think hard about what's underlying that. And if what's underlying that is this like constant feeling of like dread or guilt if you're not working and you're just inventing things for yourself to do or you're pushing yourself to work harder just because you feel like you have to alleviate that negativeness, that's that's what you need to grapple with. Um, it's not always just the hours, but rather like what's driving it. Okay. That, that makes a lot of sense because I think – you and I both, like you'd mentioned, we really like what we're doing. There are things that we don't always, so I'm very proud of you for saying no to something that maybe yeah. wasn't something that was good for you. So I think for people like us that have jobs that we really, really love, it's being very intentional about the extra work you're doing. So I feel like I'm yeah. raising my hand always for like cool projects that I just want to be, I want to be involved in everything like a uh, weirdo, yeah. but I, so I need to learn for me, it's like I need to learn like when I'm just not going to have the time or capacity to do it yeah, versus right. when I don't necessarily love something because a lot of the times I still right. am excited and interested about in it. So I think we're just really lucky because we've been in a field. We found our field. We found our home and what we love. Yeah. So I yeah. think we just need to be really smart about the th opportunities and things we say yes to, and then it's okay. So it sounds like, all right, so we've got that engagement yeah. side. So it sounds like we're, we're not so bad. We're not so far off. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, you know, and that's why I think, you know, it comes with a caveat of like, yeah, we're not so great at managing our working hours. And certainly the longer hours you work, if you're not replenishing or recovering, that can have negative impacts, but it's more about what underlies it. So I think most of the time when I'm working longer hours, even though this kind of had like a little bit of a depressing term where we're like, oh no, I think that the ultimate takeaway and the takeaway for people that are keeping track of it themselves is like, um, I do feel some of that motivational compulsion to work and I do feel some of that cognitive component. So that's something I probably have to grapple with and you have to grapple with too. You said the same, like, um, are you just filling time to fill time? Are you feeling like you're thinking about work when you shouldn't be thinking about work? Mm -hmm. Like those things are not contributing positively, but if you can enhance your engagement and find things that, that are engaging that you're working on and that means you're working longer, you're more absorbed, absorbed in your work, it's not automatically bad. So trying to sort out why you're doing what you're doing and making decisions on what you do based on what the motivation for it is, um, I think is really, really important. So that's kind of the take home. That's what I hope everybody does, like a little soul searching around why you're working the hours you're working. Are you doing it because you're just trying to fill time or you can't stop thinking about your work? Are you doing it because you're just going to be upset or um, you're going to be frustrated if you stop working because you feel like you can't stop, you can't get yourself out of the loop? Or are you waking up saying like, I'm so excited to work on this and then you just happen to end up working a lot of hours on it because you're 
absorbed in it. Those are two different things with two different sets of outcomes. If it's the first, you might need to think about um, how do you maybe practice some mindfulness to get yourself to like disengage from your work or um, you might want to think about how you can turn down opportunities that are, um, you know, allowing you or, you know, allowing you to indulge that side of yourself that's just filling time for no reason. I think also from like a leader perspective, you can think about your team members and check in with them because there's probably, well, not everybody, but if you're a leader that has a few workaholics on your team or people that work more hours than everybody else, it might be worth kind of running through some of these ideas with them and checking in with them to see if they're workaholics or if they're just super engaged and how can you support that they're not overdoing it um, for no reason if they, you know, are just doing it to do it because they feel like they have to work. So how right. can you try to support as a leader too to reduce some of those negative impacts um, and really have a, you know, have have them come out the other side a little bit more engaged instead of just working to work. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think that's all accurate. And I hope that this was helpful for people in thinking about how they can assess their own, um, uh, workaholism and also how to recognize it maybe in other people in your team, like you were just saying. And if you're a leader to try to ask people about their engagement and make sure they're engaged and not just doing things for the sake of doing them. Yeah. So I think it'll be really great if anybody's interested in well, obviously you can review, rewind, go back and hear the items again, but we'll always link to the article so you can go in and see, you know, the questions yourself and maybe have like a little, I don't know, little post-it note to remind yourself of the things that you should be avoiding if you want to be more engaged and less of a workaholic. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing this. This is a really interesting article, um, a topic that I haven't read a lot about, so I'm very excited to learn more about it. Awesome. Yes. Thank you for listening. And thanks to everyone else for listening. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you a workaholic? If you are like us, how are you getting through it? Um, again, we are more engaged, so I feel less bad about it now. But if you are, if you're struggling with this, we'd love to hear from you. If you're not, we'd love to hear from you. Regardless, reach out to us. You can email us at contact at workerbeing.com. You can find us on our brand new website at workerbeing.com. And you can find us on social on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter at workerbeing. Thanks for listening. The Worker Being Podcast is hosted by us, Patricia Grabar and Katina Sawyer, and produced by Allie Johnson. 